Good morning and welcome back to another weekend reading vlog. It is Thursday. We're going to get a little bit of an early start on this vlog. We're going to address my face. So we have some, it's not chocolate, I promise. <laughs> um, I had my wisdom teeth taken out, uh, these top two wisdom teeth taken out on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And this one was extremely rough to take out. And so um, I have some abrasions and scabs from them literally holding my mouth open. It, it was an experience and I have my carnation instant breakfast because I'm really not allowed to eat much more than like liquids and extremely soft food and that's kind of hard because I just want to eat like chicken and burgers and and live it up this weekend also I am probably going to be finishing seven eves which is amazing I don't know how we've gotten here but I'm on page 650 right now with Celine and if we continue at this pace of 75 pages a day, we should be done on Saturday, I believe. I also want to finish Radio Silence in this vlog because like I said, I've been kind of avoiding it because I'm not loving it. I don't think I've read it since last weekend. I haven't done a lot of reading since last weekend, but I would like to finish that this weekend. So I start next week on Summerween, which I'll have a TBR video up shortly. I want to have like no books that I'm currently reading, which means I do need to coordinate with Dragon from Backlist Books so that we can finish up real men knit which we're both also not really liking that much it's kind of getting a bit obnoxious there's not a lot of romance going on it's kind of awkward the lack of knitting is also pissing us both off because i believe dragon likes to knit and i like to crochet but like there's no discussion of yarn <laughs> for now i'm gonna go take a shower and hop back into work until five o'clock and i will touch base with you after that I went to Savers and they looked like they had like just stocked everything because it was really packed in the in the like mystery and thriller section. I did pick up Coma, which you saw at the end, and then I struggled to have a thumbs up to. I picked that up and now I'm home. I am eating soft foods let me show you this is a uh, cream <laughs> potato soup which I have crumbled up some look at this like beautiful shot like mmm <laughs> so this is just cream of potato soup with uh, saltines in it <laughs> and then a classy Walmart American uh, clear American mandarin orange and now I'm actually just catching up on the next 75 pages of Seven Eves. This is going to be pages 650 through 725. I'm going to finish up my soup while I'm listening. I have it on two and a half speed, two time, 2.5 speed, whatever. You know what I mean. So I should be able to zoom through it in like less than an hour for the next 75 pages. And then if I finish eating in that meantime, I'm going to play Color, Happy Color, Color Happy, that like coloring game, that fun one that's free. I want real food, guys. Like I'll chat about that when I come back. Second half of the word, cold. Seem to have a connection to Puglia, pronounced with a long U as in cool, which was the Russian word for bullet. After a brief awkward phase of trying to combine the term nat with Puglia in various ways, meaning something like bullet robot, they had just settled for Puglia, which was sufficiently precise in a universe that no longer included any actual old school bullets. Other words from the antediluvian gun world made it through unchanged. I was able to listen to the next 75 pages of Seven Eves, and I've already checked in with Celine. I did include a bit of a clip at the beginning, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it. I reorganized my bookshelves by color. So um, over starting on the very top shelves, let me tilt you up. We do have... Um, my white books going into gray and a little bit of black and then my if you haven't noticed my bookshelves are kind of like in a corner here so this is always my like active tbr either what i'm currently reading so over here and then books that are kind of coming up in my mind things i'm interested in reading in the next couple of weeks then over here is just a mess uh, right now of uh, single issue things but then below um i used to have on on the first two shelves where i have the white and gray books i used to have just Michael Crichton and Jurassic Park stuff. And now it's starting in the beginning. So on this part of the corner, I have white and gray, and then it goes down into um, black books, which I actually have enough to do like a full two shelves here. And then I went into like blue and then green, greeny, purpley colors. And then I don't have anything on the bottom shelves because with those, Bento tends to chew on my books, which really fucking sucks. With one more jarring zoom over here, we have 
yellow books going into like orangey and then red and then right down here we have some pink books into my graphic novels so um i personally think that this looks kind of nice behind me where it's a little bit more color coordinated i don't know where any of my books are anymore so that's a little uncomfortable for me but i i just really am enjoying the aesthetic of it a bit more and it makes me happy to look at it and like look at my bookshelves as a bit more of like an art piece than it is just books that I haven't read. I'm going to go film and edit my Summerween TBR video and then I might just not check in tonight. This is kind of my end of day check in and I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It is Friday and so thankful it's Friday because I'm also covering for a coworker who is off today. So it's like, <clears throat> is busy. So. I read a little bit more of Men Who Knit last night, and I really hate this book. Oh, it's so upsetting. This book is about a girl named Carrie, and she worked at a knitting store named Strong Knits, and the proprietor had four adoptive sons, and uh, her name was Mama Joy, and so Mama Joy has recently passed away, and now the four sons and Carrie are taking on the task, mostly Carrie and one of the sons named Jesse, of running the store. Allie from Mrs. Dunn Reads did a reading vlog on this, and for some reason I was like, no, it'll be different when I read it. It's supposed to be a romance about yarn and like how these two people come together, and it's really upsetting. Hi. You can lay down. That's beautiful. What a great pose. You look beautiful today. Hello. You come here if you'd like. Oh, come here. Come here. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Bento, we don't need to fight right now. Can we not? So, um... So yeah, we're both really disappointed in this so far, and I know that it's probably gonna get a two or three star from me. Um, also, Celine, being the overachiever, although they're also in, like, Australian time. <laughs> that was terrible. They're in a different time zone than me. I have a bit to catch up today. But as I learned yesterday, the audiobook on two and a half speed is like super fast and I'm able to follow 95% of it. So after work is done today, I'm going to listen to this. I'm so excited it's the weekend. Like I mentioned, it's a very busy day already and it's like super early on Friday because uh, my coworker, all their emails get forwarded to me since they're out today. I'm gonna go take a shower now. I'm realizing I really like how my hair dried yesterday. So I think it'll be a no hair wash day for me details it's all in the details also I just saw a tweet that was like how do you train your hands to not just do peace signs and I, I hate that vlogging always makes me realize I do them constantly I'm gonna actually lay down for a nap. I'm so tired. I, I don't think I ate enough today, but as you will have maybe seen, you did see in that clip ahead, just before this one, I was finishing off work a little bit late because there were some, of course, last minute Friday emergencies at work and I had to follow up on some things. And then I actually ate, <laughs> I ate chicken noodle soup and I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I can do that now. For like, probably like 45 minutes, I've been listening to Seven Eves. So right now I'm on page 778. I have still about 100 pages left. I have that much left. This is, this is crazy to me. I don't know how to feel. It's been so long coming. I, it's theoretically like three books and the majority of my reading this month has also been just graphic novels. Speaking of, really quickly, I will show I did read a book today. I finished a book. This is Alien, um, Walking Dead, The Alien. This is like a 32 page issue that got bound up for some reason into hardcover. And it is, if you're not familiar with Walking Dead, Walking Dead is a, I don't know how you wouldn't be, but Walking Dead is a series where there was a crippling, at least in the United States, a crippling zombie outbreak. I'll put this right here while I talk about it. And until this issue, there has been not, con there has not been confirmation that the outbreak was outside of the United States and so this is actually taking place in Spain and you get introduced some, to some characters very briefly. Uh, things happen in this. For, for a single issue so much happened and I'm really upset that none of it will probably ever be followed up on. I actually finished a book in one of my vlogs. <laughs>
Good morning. <laughs> I look like crap. I just, I want to appreciate. I did curl my hair yesterday, but it's really greasy now. And so this isn't really it. This isn't the look. So I changed up the angle because I realized how bad the like blowout on like that part of my camera was yesterday. So here we are in a little corner living our best lives. So yesterday I finished Seven Eves. I actually finished it last night and then I just didn't have the will to talk about it because it's such an intense book. I gave this a five out of five stars and yes, we've done it again. I feel like the only reason I would have given it a four is that I wanted more information and I wanted more book because there are a lot of concepts in this that are not expounded upon. There were a lot of cool things from the beginning of the book that are rounded up in the end of the book, but I feel like they did not get a lot of time in between. There's so much missing information that I wish could have been built upon, and I feel like, I was talking to Celine about this on Twitter last night, I feel like this could have been a multi-book series. Neil Stevenson could have turned a Frank Herbert and like made this a Dune length series because there's just so much information and he clearly was so well versed at creating a very believable, very scientific, very interesting world and we only got to see like little snippets of it at times and especially the last third of the book is extremely rushed in my opinion. I feel like that jump at about like 550 pages to 5,000 years in the future was really jarring and you never quite recover from it because there's a lot of information you want to know about what happened for the past 5,000 years. We actually really liked the discussion here about like genetics and how to manipulate them, what it means to create like your own lineage and how these these people are able to decide what the future in 5,000 years will look like more or less because they are making decisions with their genome and how their children are brought up and how their children are made. Dropped off Jose at work a few minutes ago. I went to the library and I need to go to another library now. I needed to pick up a book here. I picked up Adventure Zone. Uh, I think this is like ish, volume number three. They have things like in the vestibule so you can pick it up if it's already out there. You don't need to like ask them to come out. I actually picked, the, picked this up for Jose. Oh, there's a dog behind me. Oh, let me see your dog. He was like a Rottweiler. Oh, it's a three-legged Rottweiler. <laughs> I picked up um, number three for Jose because he's been reading this series. I need to go pick up some books for myself over at a library closer to me. After that, I'm actually going to go to a bookstore I've never been to before. That's up in Concord. It's called Gibson's. And I wanted to go yesterday, but they're only open till like five o'clock. I mean, with good reason. I need to buy Kill Creek, which I'm going to be reading next month with Geraldine. I wanted to go to a Joanne Fabrics up there, which is like right by it in Concord. I brought along Radio City, but I am listening to it on audiobook. Right now, I'm just past page 226. So, um, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Is that that much? Also, seeing people like drive up for their curbside, we'll get my books and then we'll go to the bookstore and we'll get some more books. I have a gift card that I want to use. Maybe I'll do like a little book haul, even though, let's be real. We've seen my bookshelves, I need no more books. Well, that was a bust. Apparently the library near me um, is not open on Saturdays <laughs> for library pickups. levels of luck at Gibson's and I'll show you everything when I get home in a little while but I didn't find Kill Creek I had some good luck at Joann's though and I'll show you that later we're at BAM books a million now in Concord I was trying to not buy the books that I wanted from 
like a corporately owned place. I was trying to do more local. However, everybody needed to order the book and I want to read the book as soon as possible. So I'm being picky, but I did still buy some things at Gibson's and supported a local place. It looks like now Books A Million has a overstock sale. So I'm glad I ended up here. We're gonna go in and take a peek and spend some more money. I'm on about page 333. It's taking a turn for me and I'm actually really enjoying it. I, on the way back from shopping and stuff, we were getting into a part of the book where they're talking more about college and like the main character trying to get into university. The sense of not feeling like you've chosen the right career path, the right major in school, because I changed my major like three or four times, so I can freaking feel that. So um, my mom's birthday is coming up in September. I don't know why that took me so long to think of. I wanted to make her some book sleeves. This first one here is kind of like a honeycomb shape with flowers and butterflies and I think there's some bees in there as well. I think that's really pretty. She really likes teal, she said, so I thought that would be gorgeous. And this other one I found in like a local section. This is purple lilacs. It actually says purple lilacs on it. Um, growing up in New Hampshire, uh, lilacs are really everywhere and my grandmother actually has a really beautiful, it's almost basically a tree of purple lilacs and so it's even just the smell is very nostalgic. And then I'll show you the books that I got at Gibson's which was the indie bookstore I overall again was not able to find Kill Creek which is the book I really needed to get so I might end up ordering that from another store closer to me it's just kind of annoying because the parking situation is kind of crap there so the two books I got them full price because obviously it's just an indie bookstore um, the first one here is The Farm by Joanne Ramos it sounds really creepy Nestled in New York's Hudson Valley is a luxu luxury retreat boasting every amenity, organic meals, personal fitness trainers, daily massages, and all of it for free. In fact, you're paid big money to stay here. The catch, for nine months, you cannot leave the grounds, your movements are monitored, and you're cut off from your former life while you dedicate yourself to task producing the perfect baby. Uh, to the task of producing the perfect baby for someone else. And I haven't seen this cover before. This is the cover I've seen before now, and I didn't realize it was out in paperback. I actually really like this cover. It's a lot more Stepford Wives, and I thought it was just really cool. So this is Ararat by Christopher Golden. When an earthquake reveals a secret cave hidden inside Mount Ararat, Turkey, a daring new engaged couple are determined to be the first ones inside, and what they discover will change everything. The cave is actually a buried ancient ship that many quickly come to believe is Noah's Ark. And there's a little bit more to the synopsis, but I don't want to read that because that already seems really cool, and I, and I love this cover here. We're getting toward winter. This will be a nice winter horror mystery thing because theoretically it should be really creepy. And then I went to Books and so in the end I ended up supporting a corporate entity anyways so a book that I have talked about previously and I also almost bought it at Gibson's is The Need this is by Helen Phillips um, I got this for seven dollars I talked about it before it's about a woman who there's like a home intrusion when she's watching either her child or a friend's child like she might be babysitting and someone enters the house and they know a lot about her and it's kind of creepy. I bought another bargain book which is by an author that, oh well you'll see, this is Robocalypse, this is by Daniel H. Wilson. I bought this for four dollars and I was super excited because I wanted to read this for a while, especially after I read The Andromeda Evolution. That was a book that they they had written to kind of to reimagine and revive Andromeda Stream by Michael Crichton, and it was written really well, and so I'm excited to read this. It is a tale of humanity's desperate stand against a robot uprising. Not far into our future, the dazzling technology that runs our world turns against us. Controlled by a child childlike yet massively powerful and artificial intelligence known as Arcos, the global network of machines which our world has grown dependent suddenly becomes an implacable deadly foe. At zero hour, the moment the robots attack the human race is almost annihilated as its scattered rem remnants regroup humanity for the first time unites in a determined effort to fight back and the last book it was another full price book that i got and i saw this when it first came out in hardcover this is the warehouse by rob part this is again horror spooky creepy i i didn't realize i sort of stuck on that trend Whatever. We love it. We love that for me. Paxton never expected to find himself inside these walls working for the tech company that swallowed so much of the American economy. But considering what's left of the outside world, well, suddenly what Cloud's offering doesn't seem so bad. Zinnia never thought she'd be here either. For a corporate spy going undercover at Cloud, uh, where each employee's every move is tracked, is the ultimate risk. But it also promises the ultimate reward. And she has to sacrifice Paxton to claim her prize. That's a small price to pay, right? 
equal parts page turning and terrifying. It's about what happens when big brother meets big business and who will pay the ultimate price says cloud isn't just a company it's a solution our revolutionary live work compounds provide safe clean lives so employees never have to leave and it just sounds like amazon horror <laughs> i'm so into that hardcover looked like this and i thought that was also really cool but i just never saw it anywhere for under like 35 dollars which is kind of uncommon around here usually the hardcovers don't really range over like 26 or 25. I really did not need all of these, but we have them now and still need to buy Kill Creek. So I'm gonna eat now and theoretically check in with you guys later. If I don't, I will see you tomorrow. I lied, I did not film anything today. So this is gonna be the end clip for the vlog. Um, yeah, I kinda also screwed myself a bit because I am gonna be daily vlogging starting tomorrow, Monday, when you see this video posted. And you're just gonna see my face for the next like week so I apologize but next weekend I will not be doing a weekend vlog because you'll already be getting daily vlogs from Summerween so keep an eye out for that in the meantime drop in maybe like a dancing girl with like the red dress if you got this far in the video otherwise I will see you next time bye guys mm -hmm.